I've taken you on a tour of Mary's apartment before, but not like you're going to see it today. And as a bonus, we'll be touring Rhoda's apartment too. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Behind the Scenes, where we get up close and personal with all your favorite TV and movie homes. Today we'll be exploring two apartments from the Mary Tyler Moore Show, both Mary's and Rhoda's. Let's get started. Mary's apartment changed so much over the course of the series that I had to pick a season and stick with it. I chose season one. We'll start with an overhead view to get our bearings. This is the entry and the large window that leads out to the balcony. Past that is Mary's closet on the left, and beyond that is her bathroom. We didn't get to see it on the show, but you will in today's tour. Here are the built-in shelves that also serve as a step down into the sunken living room, which is here. On the right, Mary had an area with a small table and typewriter. In season one in this corner, there was an armoire. Mary had a wood-burning stove here, and her dining area was here. Beyond the dining area was a small kitchen. We never saw this wall, the fourth wall, where the audience and cameras were, but you will today on the tour. Who didn't love these iconic Palladian windows? The windows make the apartment. All you need to see is this shot to immediately know whose apartment you're in. As a little girl, it was a big part of what made me dream about living there someday. And oh, how I wanted to live there. In the very first episode, when Mary enters the apartment and Phyllis opens the curtains to the balcony, we see Rhoda, who is under the impression it is her apartment, outside washing the windows. You'll notice in this season, to access the balcony, you actually had to open a window and climb through it. In later seasons, there were doors there. Rhoda didn't have a key to the apartment yet, so how did she access the balcony? Here's the clue. We see the top of a ladder leaning against the railing. That had to be a very scary tall ladder. Rhoda definitely had guts, didn't she? In the first season, we see colored glass in the windows here, but later on the glass was clear. Here's something I really loved about the show. Through this window, you could see the changing of the seasons in the trees outside. Just one more thing that made the place seem more real. When it was fall outside my window, it was fall outside her window. Another feature that people love about this apartment is that long row of built-in bookshelves lining the step down into the living room. So cool. In season one, there was a wooden step stool here to help Mary get from the landing down to the living area. But by season two, there was a built-in set of steps there. Which way do you like it best? Hats off to the set designers here. That seemingly simple element helps make the room. The step down helped with staging purposes, but what set designers often use for staging purposes creates amazing features because it makes them have to think outside of the box. We can learn a lot from them. When you face a design challenge, look at it as an opportunity. Get creative. Let's see what it would look like if the designers had put a more typical step down there instead. See what a difference it makes? Still cool, but it really adds something. Up this step and to the left, we see Mary's closet. Mary would head in there to change, coming out with yet another amazing outfit, every bit as wonderful as the first. In a couple episodes, we learn that there's a bathroom back there, although it's never shown. It's just hard to picture Mary having a bathroom. It goes against type. But I've had enough requests from viewers to see it that I thought you'd like it to be part of the tour. Since the plumbing and fixtures in the kitchen were somewhat antiquated, I felt that the same would likely be true in Mary's bathroom. So I gave her a simple sink and a clawfoot tub. It's kind of a tight fit in here, 
but I don't think she'd have a very big bathroom. I wanted to show you the bathroom on its own, but later when we do the full tour of the whole apartment, we'll walk through it again. Then you'll get a better idea of the whole floor plan and get to see it with ceilings and all four walls like a real home. Scenes that took place in the entryway. Mary, discovering that her apartment had been burglarized, again. Phyllis's daughter, Bess, entering the apartment wearing her mother's makeup and hairpiece. And a drunken Lou borrowing Mary's typewriter to send a letter to his wife who is out of town. Now let's explore the living room. Most of the action took place right here. Originally, the sofa was along this wall, which is how sofas are placed in most sitcoms, square at the camera. Although there were several variations, this is the arrangement that we are probably the most familiar with. Having them facing each other rather than all lined up facing the camera was just another facet of this set that made it feel more like a real place. Mary never had a bedroom in this apartment. Instead, the sofa pulled out into a bed. This was most likely done to emphasize that she was just starting her career and was still stretching dollars to make ends meet. Although in reality, the place was actually quite large, coming in at 1,294 square feet. You can see in this image that we're shown the apartment to this point on each side. The walls angle out as is very common with TV homes. But because they're angled out, it ends up giving us a fourth wall that is about 51 feet wide. So, would there have been room for a bedroom on this side? Quite possibly. I'll let you decide. But I think we all agree we love Mary's apartment just as it was. This wall had the well-known letter M for Mary. What often goes unnoticed, since we only caught a few glimpses of it, is the small letter R on this wall standing for her last name. Richards. On this wall in season one, there was a large armoire. Later, there were bookshelves there. We didn't get to see past this point on the show, but you will in the upcoming full tour. Another amazing architectural feature that we didn't get to see enough of is the vaulted ceilings with wooden beams. Fabulous. No wonder Rhoda coveted this apartment. It's not just the architectural features themselves that make the apartment, but rather the scale of them. Not just in the ceiling and beams, but also the floor-to-ceiling Palladian windows and the bookshelf steps that span almost the entire space. If you took any one of these elements and reduced them to a more typical size, it would drastically change the appearance and mood of the apartment. Scenes that took place in the living room. Rhoda on a date with Mr. and Mrs. Armin Linton. Mary getting the giggles as she attempts to use a chain to age a table she's refinishing. Mary and Rhoda staying up late, getting loopy, and writing an obituary as a joke that gets read on the air. And many disastrous parties. Now on to the dining room. You'll notice that there's a countertop under the stained glass window that can be popped up for more guests. On occasion, we saw a bar stool there. We frequently saw a ceramic pumpkin cookie jar, which the crew kept stocked with Oreos and Lorna Dunes. Now, what to put on the fourth wall in the dining room, the one that was never shown to us on TV? Well, we saw Mary refinishing furniture in a couple episodes, and those pieces never showed up in the apartment elsewhere. So I decided to put those here. I also decided to place that seldom seen bar stool along this wall too, making it easily accessible. You'll get a tour of this entire fourth wall coming up. Scenes that took place in the dining room. Mr. Grant taking almost all of the Ville Prince Orloff, leaving Mary without enough for her guests and having to tell him to put some back. Phyllis baking a pie to try and compete with the happy homemaker but then tasting the pie and being horrified at the result. And many breakfasts, lunches, and brunches. No two ways about it, Mary had a tiny kitchen. No full-sized fridge, just an under-the-counter dorm-sized model. A tiny sink. No room to really move around. And yet, didn't we love it? 
especially with that stained glass pass-through window that rolled up. Sometimes we got this view of the kitchen, but in actuality there was a wall there. You'll see as we take the full tour now what I have opted to put on the missing fourth wall. There have been pictures of the inside of the real home online, and it's nothing like the interior we're shown on TV, so we can't use that as our guide. I opted to put Palladian windows on the missing fourth wall. This room is already so deep that it takes up what would be the entire top floor as we see it from the exterior. So there would be no room there for an apartment on the other side. I did some research on similar Victorian style homes and discovered this is an option. And now we'll tour Mary's entire apartment. As a little girl, every Saturday night I would watch the show, sitting under the hairdryer with pink sponge rollers in my hair, so it would curl up at the ends just like Mary's. I wanted her hair and her wardrobe and her apartment. I daydreamed of moving off on my own after graduation and living a life like hers. In fact, one of the first things I did when I finally got a place of my own was I hung a large wooden M on my wall. I know I'm not alone in this. I've heard others share similar stories. Many young girls, and even those who were not so young, were inspired by Mary Richards. We looked up to her as a role model. We saw someone who was feminine and yet strong, seemingly having it all and yet still humble. She was fun and pretty and smart and had aspirations. She went after her dreams and showed us how through hard work, maybe, we could reach our dreams too. And they couldn't have picked a better actress to play the part. It was as though Mary Tyler Moore was Mary Richards. It never seemed like she was acting. She just was Mary. Her apartment, as with all good set design, told us so much more about her. It told us she was just starting out with not much money, going without a bedroom or even a regular bed. We saw her throw parties, making all the food out of her tiny little kitchen with its tiny little fridge. The apartment had a feminine feel to it, but the big letter M also showed us the sense of ownership, the independence. This was her place. She was on her own. Trying to make it in the big city, in the big world, no matter what anyone else said, no matter who doubted her, she was going to make it. She was going to make it, after all. Set designers use design to tell us more about the characters and to create a mood. For them, it's not about trends. Sometimes their work starts trends, but it most certainly doesn't follow them. For them, it's all about the story. Shouldn't the design in our own homes be like that too? Not following trends, but using the design in our homes to tell our stories. The character of Mary Richards felt right at home here. The set designers knew what they were doing. All great design is personal. Now let's visit Rhoda's apartment. I loved the character of Rhoda Morgenstern as played by Valerie Harper, and aren't we glad she got the role? Rhoda was funny and irreverent, and although so beautiful, she had a self-deprecating humor. Who can forget the line, I don't know why I'm putting this in my mouth, I should just apply it directly to my hips. A line, by the way, that Valerie Harper actually said over lunch one day on the set it was overheard, and just like that, it went into the script. Rhoda's apartment is very different from Mary's. Her apartment tells of a woman who's a free spirit, quirky in a fun way, and unconventional. It also says she's full of life and spontaneity. Rhoda is a window dresser, so she knows something of design, and she's chosen to have some fun with it in her own place. As a young girl, I was mesmerized by her apartment. I'd never seen a place that was so colorful, so overcome with pink and orange. When my parents said they were going to repaint my room and I could choose the color, that was easy. I chose tangerine orange on every wall. Soon my room glowed too. 
Just for fun, let's see the difference it would make if we painted the walls the same color as Mary's apartment. Quite a different feeling in this room. I still like it, but it doesn't say Rhoda anymore. The set designers knew what they were doing. This, this says Rhoda. Some things to point out before we take the tour. First of all, Rhoda's apartment couldn't be where it is shown to us going by the exterior. Yes, there was a round bay window here, but it's located on the floor below Mary's. Yet on the show, Rhoda's apartment was one floor up from Mary's. It can't be in this turret because, again, this isn't one floor up, but on the same floor as Mary's. And it's on the right-hand side of Mary's balcony. Rhoda's apartment is on this side. The exterior of a TV home not matching the interior is very common. In fact, to date, I have yet to create a tour of a TV home where the exterior matched what was going on inside. Let's take a look at an overhead view now of Rhoda's apartment. We are shown her bed as being here, so Rhoda doesn't have a bedroom either. There's a rack full of clothes here, meaning possibly no closet, and a step up to the rounded bay window area with her makeup table. In this episode, we see just a smidgen of her kitchenette here. There were mannequin parts all around the room. In fact, two purple arms hold up these lampshades. In this part of the room, we see a step down to a sunken area. You'll see more of that in the tour coming up. As for the fourth wall that we were never shown, I assumed that Rhoda would have her own bathroom, so that gets put down on this end. She has a table that she pulled out for use later on in the series, so it must be somewhere in the apartment. I chose to put it here near the kitchenette. We see two chairs in this scene. One is from her makeup area, so I assumed the other would be by her table over here for when she dines alone. We know that she loves plants because she later opens a shop aptly named Rhoda's Dendron, which we never actually got to see. And since we see no plants on this side of the room, I put them on the side we never got to see, the fourth wall. Rhoda's apartment is somewhat of a downgrade from Mary's, less square feet, lath and plaster walls, imagine that in the winter, and so in the bathroom you'll see that I gave Rhoda just a corner shower and no tub. Scenes that took place in Rhoda's apartment. Rhoda's mother coming for a somewhat unwelcome visit and trying to make them be best friends. Getting ready for a beauty contest that she ends up winning and a dinner date with Lou that isn't really a date, but causes some gossip anyway. Let's tour Rhoda's apartment now. Just as with Mary's apartment, Rhoda's tells a story, her story. With set designers, it's always all about the story. Remember, all great design is personal. When I was a little girl, I borrowed design from my favorite homes the wooden M from Mary's apartment, and vibrant walls from Rhoda's place. But, of course, as adults, we learn not to borrow design. That's someone else's story. We learn, or should learn, to tell our own story through design. We can learn a lot of great design principles from set design, but it's not about copying those elements. It's about applying the principles. I have another show on this channel called Cinematically Inspired Design, where we take the design principles from the cinema and bring them into our own homes. So instead of following trends which come and go, we learn to use design the way set designers do, to create the mood we want in our home and to tell our story. What TV or movie home would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments. But as for today, that's a wrap. See you next time on Behind the Scenes.